Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna to do this. We're slicing stuff up in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got two CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with our latest course being released just last month, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. So if you wanna test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two month trial that will give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So here we are in Cinema 4D and you can see I've got my head here. This guy is a character from Daz 3D Studio, which is a free bit of software. I'll put a link down below if you wanna check that out. So the effect we're trying to create is inspired by a sculpture in Prague called Metal Morphosis. I'll put a link to that down below as well. So the first thing we wanna do is figure out how to chop this head up. And the best way to do that is probably with a Voronoi Fracture. So with our head selected, we'll come up to MoGraph and down to Voronoi Fracture. Don't forget to hold Alt when you click so it's automatically applied. And that shatters our head up nicely. But you can see all the pieces are pretty random looking at the moment. And if we come down here and offset those fragments a bit, you can probably get a better look at this. It does look kind of cool like this, but we want to slice it up nice and evenly across this way. So we'll just bring that back down a bit. Something like that. Now we need something to control the distribution of the fracture here. And that something is going to be, back under MoGraph, a matrix object. Now when you bring that in, the matrixes or the matrix I, whatever the plural of matrixes is, will be spread out in a grid here. So we want to change that first. We want our matrix points going up in the Y direction. So if we change the mode to linear and move this over a bit, so we can see it. We've just got three matrixes here. We probably want a few more than that. So back over here, we'll bring that count up. Let's try five for now. And we want those five points to drive our fracture. So if we click on that guy, down here under the sources tab, we've currently got some random points being generated across our mesh here, driving the fracture distribution, which is why it looks pretty random. But if we delete that, we can use our matrix instead if we drag that into here, and that'll give us these nice even cuts across this way. And if we go back to our matrix, we can play around with this. If we bring that count up and bring them a bit closer together in the Y axis, we get these nice strips here. And what's cool about this setup is if we've got the move tool selected, we can grab this top matrix point and drag it around. And that's gonna change the angle of these cuts. So you could get some pretty interesting looks. Let's just undo that. For now, we want these going horizontal. And of course, you don't have to use a head with this. It can be any model you want. One thing I will mention though, is you want your geometry to be pretty tidy. If we switch that fracture off for a second and turn on the lines, you can see our model is pretty clean. If you're working with something that's a bit dense, you might have issues with this, especially when it comes to animating it. But you can see everything's running nice and smooth for us. Let's switch those lines off. So the next thing we want to do is give some thickness to these strips. We don't want them just wrapping around our model like that. We want solid chunks. So back in our fracture, we'll switch over to the object tab. And all we need to do is turn on optimize and close holes. And that's looking pretty good. So now we can start the animation. Basically, we want each of these pieces to spin independently and return back to the center point here and have a bit of an offset while they do that. So with our fracture selected, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and under effectors, we'll grab a plane effector. And straight away, that's gonna push everything up in the Y direction. And you can see we can adjust that strength here, but we don't really wanna affect all of these pieces together. Let's see if we can control them individually. Let's go over to the parameter tab and you can see here's our Y value. That's controlling how far it's going up. But for us to control which pieces are affected, we'll need to use some fall off. So let's go over to the fall off tab here. And if you're in Cinema 4D 20, you'll get something like this. These are the new field options we can use to control our fall off. So let's come down here and grab a linear field. And we can see that over here in the viewport. 
Basically, if we slide this over here, anything to the right will be affected and anything to the left won't. And the fall off itself happens between the two planes here. Now we want this effect to go up this way. So we'll come down here and change the direction to positive Y. And now we can affect these pieces one by one by dragging this up. Maybe we'll make this a little bit more extreme so you can see this a bit easier. If we go back to the parameter tab, let's crank up this Y value. And now if we grab our field and move that, we get a pretty interesting effect. Let me just frame this up a bit. You could animate this and have all the pieces flying out or flying in. And while we've got it like this, you can see those slices a bit easier. So for this example, we want these pieces to spin rather than move up. So back down here in our parameters, we don't need this Y value. Let's turn off the position and we'll switch on the rotation. And if we play with our heading value here, you can see those pieces start to spin. We want each of these to do one full revolution. So if we set this to 360 degrees, and we'll need to grab our field again. Now, if we move this, we'll have zero spin down here and the full 360 degrees up here. So let's do exactly that and add a couple of keyframes. We'll set the Y value here on frame zero, and then we'll go all the way to the end of the timeline. And we can just move this up till our field is past the head and we'll set another keyframe. Now, if we play that back, all of our pieces will do a full spin one at a time. And we've basically got our effect but well, we can make this look a little bit more interesting. Let's first give ourselves a few more frames to play with. Let's put this up to 150. And we'll play that back one more time. It's all looking very linear at the moment. It'd be nice if we had some overshoot or a bit of bounce when these pieces spin into place. So let's grab our plane and back under the fall off tab. If we click and hold this clamp button here, we've got a few other options. And the one we want is the delay. So when we bring that in, it pops in up here above our linear field. And if we play that back, it seems to have smoothed out our animation a little bit. And that's because down here, we've got our delay mode set to smooth. And if we change that to spring and play that back, we've got kind of a springy effect, but it looks a little bit strange. Let's rewind. The problem here is this little button. This is the clamp and it's actually clamping the values of our delay. So we're not really getting a springy effect, but if we turn that off and hit play again, that springiness should be nice and smooth. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. What's nice about this is at any time you can adjust these slices. If we come back to our matrix here, we can bring the count up and the spacing in the Y direction down and we'll have a bunch more slices and everything's still running nice and fast. You could even go a bit extreme with this Let's crank this up to 30 and bring these right down. And that's looking pretty cool. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you make something cool with this effect, I'd love to see it. So tag us in social media. As usual, you can download the project file below and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.